Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. And here's your news now. Let's go around the block for your top local news stories. Earlier this week, Jordan Burnham informed students about depression awareness. Let's check in for more on this event. On Tuesday the 11th, students gathered in the Widener Lecture Hall to listen to guest speaker Jordan Burnham. Jordan Burnham is a public speaker who discusses mental health disorders that affect many of us. He shares his stories of struggling with depression and hiding his internal pain during high school. saying, carry on their son, and all I do is disappoint them, make them angry and upset. I frustrate them. I can tell by the look on their faces they don't even want me to be their son anymore. What's the point in being here? When I can't make the people that mean the most to me, my sister, my mom, my dad, if I can't make them happy, what's the point in being here? That was the night that I tried to take my own life by going out of my nine story bed one window. Jordan has been telling his story and inspiring others to speak out about mental health. His brave and relatable presentation encourages students and informs them that talking about whatever they are going through is a sign of remarkable strength. Jordan inspired everyone that attended his speech. For Location, I'm Megan Sokolowski. Cat Board hosted another open mic night this past Monday. Here's Justin Silner to see what kind of acts performed. Hey, this is Justin Silner live on location. We're here, we're here at open mic night, getting ready for a good night. Let's see what we have in store. What are you guys doing tonight? He's playing guitar and I'm playing my cajon, which is a box drum. What songs are you singing? Uh, Runaway by Kanye West, uh, All the Lights by Kanye West, and uh, Cough Syrup by Young the Giant. to me when I'm feeling down inspires me without a sound she touches me and I get turned around life's too short to even care at all the world coming up now coming up now out of the blue whoa zombies in the park they're looking for my heart whoa. Well, there you have it. That was Cabrini's open mic night. Those were some great acts, and we'll see you next year. Back to you at the studio. Occupy Philly took off last week as protesters gathered in Center City. Felicia went downtown to see what's going on. Occupy Philadelphia is a protest that has been taking place on the steps of City Hall since October 6th. The protesters are taking a stand against social and economic inequality corporate greed, and the politics that enforce these notions. The original protest, Occupy Wall Street, began in New York City on September 17th. We've had large general assemblies of over a thousand people. Um, we're trying to reach unanimous consensus decisions. So everything here literally is a totally horizontal movement. There are no leaders. Um, it's, this is a people movement and it has grown from the ground up. So we're mainly against a lot of things, but it's the 99% of Americans that are uh, really suffering from the disproportion of wealth in this country. Um, pretty much our purpose is to show the amount of people that are struggling and unsatisfied with the way the government is handling the economy situation. There's 10% uh, of our people hold the wealth in America and there's 99% of the people that are struggling, working, having trouble finding jobs when we are the majority of our country. So this is people getting together and showing 
the world pretty much just we're not happy and we want them to do something about it. Many of the demonstrators are camping out in front of City Hall as a form of protest. Uh, I camped out last night. I, me and a couple of friends are actually staying here. It's definitely humbling. You know, there are people that have to do this every day. So it's kind of getting a taste of what they're going through at the same time. But, you know, we've been, we've gathered all these committees together. We have food, we have medical care, we have our own security, we have people donating blankets. Like, we're trying to make everyone as comfortable as we can. We've kind of started our little neighborhood. There's even a daycare section over there where people have brought children, so it's completely safe and um, you know peaceful. We're not trying to cause anyone any problems, but yeah, we just want to get our point across. The hundreds of protesters in Center City have truly built a community. Most of the residents plan to continue protesting until their needs are met. I'm Felicia Melvin. Now back to the news desk. And now let's go across the nation with Liz. Earlier this week, the U.S. Senate blocked President Obama's $447 billion jobs bill with over 40 senators voting against debate of the bill, essentially shelving it. The broad plan included cuts in payroll taxes for workers and employers and provides new funding for roads, bridges, and other infrastructures. The March on Wall Street continues and it's moving upward to Uptown, as many community organizing groups have pushed the occupiers to march at the homes of billionaires. Until earlier this week, the protests have stayed close to downtown, where Zuccotti Park has become a makeshift base camp. Mayor Bloomberg stated that the protesters can stay as long as they obey the laws. Attorney General Eric Holder is under fire after his alleged involvement with the failed anti-gun running operation, Fast and Furious. Many questions have been left unanswered, as Holder has refused questions of his knowledge on the subject. House Oversight Committee Chairman Daryl Issa has stated that he will issue subpoenas if questions are not answered. And now to Around the World with Holly. The United States accused Iran of a plot to kill the Saudi ambassador to Washington earlier this week. The U.S. authorities broke up a plot by two men connected to the Iran Security Agency, escalating tensions between Washington and Tehran. President Barack Obama called the plot a fragrant violation of U.S. and international law. British and American special forces freed the crew of an Italian cargo ship after they were hijacked by Somali pirates earlier this week. Pirates flourish off largely lawless Somalia by attacking passing ships, taking hostages, and demanding ransoms to free them and the vessels. The Italian defense minister said they would shortly deploy a special naval force on merchant vessels to protect them from Somalia gun gunmen as an effort to combat piracy. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's check in with Jimmy for your latest tech connection. Hey everyone, here's your latest tech news. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs died on October 4th, losing his seven-year battle with a rare form of pancreatic cancer. His legacy as a visionary and creative genius can be felt in almost every aspect of life. Fans of Apple and Steve Jobs set up impromptu displays of flowers, messages, and other items at Apple retail stores around the world after learning of the news. Steve Jobs made the personal computer personal. As we look forward to the post-PC era, we will have Steve Jobs to thank every time we use our laptops and power on our smartphones. In related news, Apple sold out of the latest iPhone hardware stock for launch day. Pre-orders for the iPhone 4S have had their shipment estimates slip to one to two weeks following intense demand for the new phone. Apple reported that it had over one million pre-orders in the first 24 hours of availability. Apple will still have some devices to sell on a first-come, first-served basis at the retail stores for those who still want to wait in line. iOS 5 launched on October 12th, and the new iPhone is slated for an October 14th release. The passing of Steve Jobs did not only affect Apple and those who are fans of Apple. Samsung and Google announced that they have canceled a previously scheduled event at which the companies were planning to introduce the Nexus Prime, the first handset to run Google's latest ice cream sandwich version of Android. All Things D reported that the event was canceled due to Jobs' death, feeling that the launch would be inappropriate given the mourning process still going on throughout the tech industry and the world. That's all I have this week. I'll be sure to stay plugged in to the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's go to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Liz. As many know, in college, your time is valued and some find themselves overwhelmed with not enough time in the day. As the semester gets more intense, here are a few tips to help you manage your time even better. First off, do the most important thing first. Whatever it may be, get it done so it does not loom over the other things you may need to do during the day. That is where you need to prioritize your work. Second, know when you work best. Each person has a best time. You can find yours by monitoring your productivity over a period of time. Then you need to manage your schedule to keep your best time free for your most important work. 
Third, admit that multitasking is really a bad thing. Not only does it decrease productivity, it tires you faster than working on things one at a time. So if you're working on a computer, try to keep Facebook and other social networks off to keep you focused. If you need to watch that one show you love, take a break. Those are always a good thing. And finally, in the digital world we live in, check your email on a schedule. Just because someone can contact you, right, contact you right away doesn't mean that you need to respond to them immediately. If there's an emergency, people know how to get to you. And those were your time-saving tips of the week. Back to Liz and Holly at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's take a look back in history. On October 12, 2002, Jimmy Carter won the Nobel Peace Prize for his decades of untiring effort to find peaceful solutions to international conflicts, to advance democracy and human rights, and to promote economic and social development. Carter was the third president to earn the prize following Theodore Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson. More recently, President Obama was awarded the prize in 2008. On October 13, 2010, the last of the 33 Chilean miners were rescued after spending nearly two months trapped a half a mile below the ground. Their struggle began on August 5th after their mine collapsed and thought no one would find them. Growing desperate, almost resorting in suicide and cannibalism, but their hopes were restored after a drill reached the cavern they were in on August 17th. And on October 17, 1931, Al Scarface Capone was sentenced to 11 years in prison for tax evasion. Capone earned his nickname Scarface after being sliced across the cheek during a fight. Scarface and his men were notorious for their disregard of human life as he gained national fame for his St. Valentine's Day Massacre, slaying seven of his rivals. He made his way around the country and was imprisoned for a brief period of time in Philadelphia's Eastern State Penitentiary. His time at Eastern State was spent in relative luxury as his cell contained fine furniture, oriental rugs, and a radio. And that was your look back in history. Now let's go to Leah for your Cabrini Sports update. What is up with the Eagles? This dream team has lost four consecutive games. After having a 129 career wins and leading the team to the 2004 Super Bowl, if this season continues to go downhill, will they dismiss their head coach, Andy Reid, with two years left on his contract? Let's take a look to see what students around campus have to say about this. So just let it play it out, see what happens, go from there. I mean, they got plenty of time to make up this year. They're just still like, 10 plus games left, so just go with it. Well, I think Michael Vick's a beast, and he's like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Andy Reid's not on the field making the mistakes, but he's the one coaching these guys. He's the one putting them in the position, so. Andy Reid should go. I've been waiting to see him go for years now. His time management is horrible, and his play calling is bad. The season is not looking good right now. If he turns it around, 10 and 6 season, I'd say keep them, but if he doesn't, cut him. Philadelphia's professional sports are definitely not doing well as our very own Cabrini College, but hopefully the Eagles can come out with the mentality to win on Sunday, October 16th against the Redskins at 1 o'clock p.m. The Cabrini College women's soccer team took home a 2-1 win over Baptist Bible College. This win improves the record to 5-1 in the conference and 7-4-1 overall. The Lady Cavs' next big conference game is on October 14th at noon against Gwyneth Mercy College on Dixon Field. Last weekend, the men's soccer team contained Immaculata University to just three shots. The Mighty Max were unable to score while the Cavaliers had 18 shots on goal, putting two in the back of the net. And as for the field hockey team, they had a 7-3 win on Monday at Delaware Valley College. They have now won six of their seven last seven games to advance to a record of 7-4 this season. Tune in next week for the results of the Eagles game and more fall sports coverage. And now back to Holly and Liz at the news desk. Thanks, Leah. Now let's check in with Melissa for your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. The nominations for AMAs were announced, and Adele leads with four nominees, including Artist of the Year, Art other artists such as Rihanna, Katy Perry, Lil Wayne, and Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift were all nominated three times in various categories. So come November 20th, we will all have to check it out to see what the results will reveal. Beyonce was excited to show off her baby bump, but is it a hoax? In an interview at an Australian talk show, as she went to take a seat, in a matter of seconds, her stomach began to inflate. But was it just the material of her dress? The season finale of The Real Housewives of New Jersey wasn't too drama-filled, even though Teresa did decide to write hurtful comments about her friends in her cookbook. But Teresa claims that they were just jokes. All of the castmates will be back next season, but there haven't been any plans for a season five yet. WIBF will be having a bake sale on Monday in Founders Hall from 11 to 2 p.m., so make sure you stop by with your wallets. 
That's all of the entertainment updates I have for you this time. I'm Melissa Webb, now back to Holly and Liz. Thanks, Melissa. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Liz Scopoletti. And I'm Holly Prendergast. Have a great week, Cabrini. Thank you.